Okay guys, so this is going to be a six mark level of response question on the structure of benzene, okay? This is from an AQA A-level chem pass paper. Now, I'm going to go quite deep into this just to give you guys a solid background of the theory. And then I'm going to write out in bullet points my ideal response for this question just so that you guys can compare it with your own answer. Now, I'm not perfect. Okay? I don't expect to always get all the marks, but I just try my best to help you guys out with what I would put down in the exam. So let's start with this and just read through the question then. So we're given some data, okay? We're given some data about the hydrogenation of cyclohexene and of benzene. So we have some enthalpy values here, whoop, minus 120 and minus 208. So ultimately, we're going to have to compare these two in our response. So what do they want us to do here? So they want us to explain, okay? That's our command word. We're going to have to get real detailed with our justification of our points here. So explain the bonding. So I'm going to label that first bonding and shape of a benzene molecule. Compare the stability. So it's really important as our other command word compare. So compare the stability of benzene with that of the hypothetical cyclohexa 135 triene molecule. Okay, and we have to use data. So they're telling us to use data. So we're going to have to use these two values in our responses in some way. Okay, guys, so I, I went ahead and got rid of our uh, lines here just so I had some more space to draw out the structures and really detailed explanation of what's going on here. Okay, so this is what we refer to as the Kekulé structure. Okay, so you don't really need to know this in terms of like what the, the name is called because they're just referring it as cyclohexa 135 triene but that's exactly the same as this right here okay now i'm going to use this model to explain what's happening within the structure and the bonding okay so i honestly feel like a level at a level they do a really poor job of explaining this because they don't detail anything about p orbital hybridization okay sp2 hybridization within the benzene molecule so i'm not going to actually explain it here because it might confuse you even more okay so i've gone ahead and drawn in our orbitals okay now go ahead and forget the double bonds for a second well i'm going to expand upon that in a bit but for now we can just know that these are all sigma bonds, okay? So each carbon is surrounded by three covalent bonds like we can see here, and they are all sigma bonds, okay? Just a shared pair of electrons. Now, sigma bonds, the other bond that we need to be aware of is pi bonds, and we'll get onto that in a second. But sigma bonds are a lot stronger than pi bonds, and that's because the orbitals overlap, okay? Now, so here, I can just gonna label this real quick as sigma bonds. Okay, so each carbon has three sigma bonds and they are covalent. So that's going to be our point in, in the first part of our answer regarding bonding. Now, the other thing I want to mention quickly regarding bonding angles is, so around this carbon, right, what we can do is just think of this as a circle. Okay, so I'm probably getting ahead of myself here, but basically, remember carbon is in group four. So ultimately, we're going to have four outer electrons or four valence electrons. But as we can see here, the carbon only has three bonding groups around it, okay? Uh, bonding pairs, I should say. So ultimately, that means that there's an ex extra electron missing, okay? And that extra electron is actually in a p orbital above and below the plane of the ring. So this ring right here is in a fixed plane. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slightly change this diagram so we can see the p orbital orientation and it hopefully makes things a bit more clear for you guys. But before I do that, let me just quickly break down the angle. Like I said, just think of a circle around this carbon, okay? Because this is a hexagonal structure, each carbon is going to have the same bond angle, okay? So if you think of this as a as a, as a circle, okay, the bond angle in a circle is three <laughs> bond angle in a circle. The the bond the angle of a circle is 360 degrees, okay? So if you just split that into three, like this, split it into a piece of pie. We're going to split this 360 divided by 3 equals 120, okay? That's the easiest way to think about it, is each of these bond angles here is 120 degrees, okay? And we're going to want to mention that in our answer to get as many marks as possible.
All right, guys, so I've gone ahead and deleted that old picture um, I, just so I didn't have to show the sigma bonds because when you show all the sigma and the pi bonds, it gets real messy, okay? So essentially, just ignore the sigma bonds for a second, but each of these bonds here is going to have one sigma bond each, okay? Um, but I've just deleted the orbitals so we can focus specifically on the p orbitals. And hopefully you guys can see from this drawing here that we the orbitals are above and below the plane of the ring. So if this is a plane of the ring, it's above and below it. Hopefully that makes sense, okay? Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in in the pi electron clouds just so we can actually get a visualization of what's happening here. All right, guys, so hopefully you can see it's a bit messy, but hopefully you can see what's going on here. So we have our p electrons existing above and below the carbons right here. So essentially what can happen is these p orbitals, they overlap essentially, and this is our pi bond here, okay? So our pi bond would be this. So this would be one pi bond right here above and below the plane of the sigma bond. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Now, this is only occurring in our double bonded portion of the benzene structure. So this would be our Kekulé, where we have your, your interchanging double single bond right here for, between the carbons, okay? So we can have like an electron here, it can exist between this double bond, the electron can be here, it can be over here, it can be down here, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna be somewhere within this pi system, okay? And that's what we refer to it as. Now, this would be the case with the Kekulé structure, but that's not what happens, and I'm gonna expand upon that in my response, but I thought I'd explain it with diagrams first because it hopefully it helps you guys visualize it a bit better and understand it. So what I'm gonna do now is I, I'm actually gonna relay this um, redraw it slightly so we can show how benzene actually looks when these double bonds are just delocalized into one entire ring. Okay guys, so expanding upon this again, now if I draw two benzenes right here right, right, uh, real quick, um, just to explain what's happening here. So, this is probably a real long video, but hopefully it gives you some good theory breakdown. Okay, so let's say we have this uh, structure right here, so this double bonded structure. Now what we, what we can do is, we, what they originally thought is, let's switch up the double bonds here so they alternate between them. They are at dynamic equilibrium and they essentially shift really, really quickly between the two, okay? So that it's never really this and it's never really this. Now, if you go on to university, you may learn about resonance structures, which this is what this essentially is. Now, they ultimately disproved this. They said, this isn't really the case. What happens, so that's what I've demonstrated here, actually. So the, the green pi, um, pi orbitals right here, these green pi bonds, um, this would be the case of like, for example, this one right here. So this would be the example, let's say is this is the green, right? And then it interchanges to become the yellow, which would be this. But ultimately that's not what happens, okay? These actually just delocalize completely. So we don't have like separate pi bonds here. They actually delocalize into one giant like donut like shape above and below the plane of the ring. Okay, so that's my diagrams finished there. Hopefully I didn't just confuse the hell out of you. Hopefully it made things a lot more clear. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that knowledge that I just gave you and I'm gonna write it out and lay it out in a very concise, coherent sequence so we can hopefully get all of the six marks in the bag for this quite difficult question, okay? Okay guys, so when responding to this question, I'm gonna deal with this whole explaining thing first. So explain the bonding and the shape. That's gonna be my first point here. I'm gonna focus on that. And then once we got that out of the way, I'm gonna compare the stability. Okay, and that's gonna be our point two. Okay, and we're gonna be using our data and our answer to compare this. Okay, so that's how I'm gonna lay it out. Ultimately, that's what I recommend all my students to do is just mirror the sequence of the question in your response. It's not always ideal, but that's just ultimately what you want to do because then that avoids the whole process of like planning everything out and getting it in a good order. You can just mirror the order that they ask the question in. All right, so I've written out my first couple bullet points here. Remember guys, level of response, bullet points are completely fine. It's not an essay question, okay? This isn't biology. So what I wrote here was benzene is a planar molecule containing six carbon atoms and six hydrogen atoms with the molecular formula C6H6, okay? Right, next up, the six carbon atoms arrange themselves in a cyclical hexagonal ring with each carbon being bonded to two other carbons and one hydrogen via covalent sigma bonds, okay? And and that's exactly what I explained in my first diagram regarding the bonding, okay? Okay, next up, next bullet point. This leaves one additional 2p orbital electron on each carbon, perpendicular to the plane of the ring. 
These p orbital electrons form pi bonds in the delocalized ring above and below the plane of the carbon ring, termed a delocalized pi cloud. Now, I wrote that last bit about it termed being this. It ultimately, depending on which textbook you look at, which paper you're looking at, it's going to be called a different thing. As long as you focus on the point that it's delocalized, okay, and that it's a cloud or a ring or a system, you'll be completely fine. Now, I just chucked in the extra pi terminology here because for those six marks, you really want to show off with your chemistry terminology, okay? So that's exactly what I did here. Now, some of you may be confused regarding the additional 2p orbital electron, and that honestly goes beyond the specification, okay? So I'm not going to touch on that here because it might just confuse you a little bit more. It's all to do with orbital hybridization, so I'm just going to leave it out of the video, all right? Okay, one more bullet point here. In total, there are 12 sigma bonds and three pi bonds with a bond angle of 120 degrees between each atom. Okay, although there's only three pi bonds, like I said, they delocalize over the entire system above and below the ring, okay? All right, going through this super quickly. This is actually taking me ages to write out, but hopefully it's all right just skipping that step so it saves you guys some precious time, okay? So one thing AQA love to see is regarding the bond length, okay? So here I just wrote, the bond lengths are neither the length of a carbon-carbon single bond or a carbon-carbon double bond, but are somewhere in between and are all equal. Okay, this is really important. AQA loves to see this. So if you think, I, I can't remember off the top of my head what the length of a single carbon and a double carbon bond are, but that is not the case when it comes on to benzene. The bonds that we measure are actually somewhere in between the two. And this just tells us that it's neither a single carbon bond or a double carbon bond. We've got something completely different going on here. And that's just the delocalized ring structure, okay? All right, so that's point one done right here. Point one is done. We've extensively spoken about the bonding and the shape. Let's move on to comparing the stability. So I put a brief paragraph here, uh, kind of run out of space, but um, maybe I went on a bit too long about the other stuff, but I really wanted to try and get those as many of the six marks as possible. As you'll see when I go for the examiner's report, okay, a very, very small percentage got six marks here. Okay, so let's go over this paragraph, this couple bullet points here quickly. So benzene is more stable than cyclohexa 135 triene due to it having a enthalpy of hydrogenation of minus 208 kilojoules per mole rather than the expected value of minus 360 kilojoules per mole in the Kekulé structure, which contains three carbon carbon double bonds. Okay, and that's just because you take this value, the minus 120, for one double bond, and you times it by three to make it the three double bonds. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. All right, next up, last bullet point in this whole question. Benzene's enthalpy change for hydrogenation is less exothermic by 152 kilojoules per mole, making it lower in energy and thus more stable. Ooh, long question done, right? Finally completed it, okay? So... Because they asked us to use data, that's why I mentioned all these numbers here, okay? So we want to focus, and this is the case where you always want to mention this minus 360, okay? Because they haven't told us that cyclohexa 135 triene would be 360 uh, kilojoules per mole, okay? But you have to take your knowledge of, uh, it's just straight out of the spec, really, times this guy by three, like I said, and you just want to use the data in your responses to get as many marks as possible. And then what we can say that is, if it's less exothermic, it's going to be more stable. How much less exothermic is it? And it's less exothermic by 152 kilojoules per mole. Right, so we've compared them, we've used our data, and hopefully, I try my best here to get all six marks. Hopefully, it helped you guys out if you were struggling with aromatics, struggling with benzene. But yeah, that's the end of the video. I really hope you found it helpful, you learned something. If you did, be sure to like the video. It took me a long time to make, do all the drawings and everything. Subscribe for future maths and science content. Best of luck in your exams, guys. Peace.